This is my fourth time I am addressing this Makkah, this Kum Mela of broadcasting engineers. And I don't think uh, you would like to see me for a fifth time, nor would I come even though I have my tenure till the end of February because one would not like to pursue the same subject again and again. Four years ago when I addressed you, I was doing so on the basis of certain inputs that any intelligent person can pick up. I'm from the subject of anthropology and history, but it's not rocket science to pick up what's essential. And I've made a plea. First of all, let me thank you for your kindness, because I know there are people here who would not like uh, do not like the way I put these statements, but I'm sorry, as a public servant, I have my duties, and I have very preconceived notions of what my duties are. In the first year, I had challenged the mindless growth of terrestrial transmission, analog terrestrial transmission. I remain more committed to it than ever before. That's my first thing. So it, it, it gave a rude shock to those who had grown up in the environment of endless expansion of analog terrestrial transmission, who had held people who are worth, who had held people like Jolly to be the role model, one transmitter a day. Because my submission was that after the world, after India opened up to the world, and positively by 2002, you knew which way the cookie was crumbling. And when satellite took over, the absolute insistence on going on analog terrestrial TV was either zid or the mindlessness of Prasar Bharti, supported ably by the robotic responses of colleagues elsewhere. We spent so much money, I was calculating around 800 crores in the last two years on this expansion, but let me not take that to be the main, main item of my speech or talk. Uh, Mathurji, you will be going to taking over as secretary to the government of India and you have already started, already got much of your honours. But let me tell you, as an old man who is completing his eighth year, unfortunately, in that rank, though of course discounted now, that we have responsibilities beyond signing notes prepared by deputy secretaries. There are responsibilities to reach out and I am sure you will be able to do it in your new domain. Why I bring these things is, I'll, I'll, I'll get to the context. When we talk of analog terrestrial, I would not hammer the point, but as a citizen of India, you and I are entitled to ask the question, why was technology funds put into an area that is sinking Prasar Bharti today? Prasar Bharti's earnings have come down drastically, I think by 35% in one year, because terrestrial viewership has come down to a small number. From the first year itself, when Mr. Bhatnagar was here, I used to, we used to Mr. RK, uh, RK Jain was here as Chief Engineer, Engine in Chief, we spoke about it. But no one could stop the horse. They said the horse is on it, the train is on its journey, so let it continue. Plan after plan, we fool ourselves, we reinforce past mistakes and went on the journey. At that time, one of our ill-informed DGs mentioned that it was around 20 million. My market test was 12 million. There are ways. You have to go to say, hello. You have to go to sailors' bars to find out what is the real truth. From 5 million, you've come down. Along with that, has slashed down earnings, viewership, everything of Durdashan. No amount of exciting content can really make up right now but we will, thanks to our minister, both our ministers, uh, we have a policy on content which I hope will take about two to three months and we will make a turnaround in spite of the constriction, in spite of the letdown on technological transmission to the last door. In fact, again as a citizen, I would question the arrogance of people who think that by extending terrestrial, analog terrestrial, you are actually chaining the India's poor, to watching only two television channels, DD News and DD uh, Durdashan National. Who has given the authority to anyone 
to imprison people to see two channels. On the other hand, the same group of engineers have done a splendid job by expanding DISH, whereby from the very limited number who are watching terrestrial, who will come down to minuscule numbers, we are now a platform that reaches 65 channels, our own engineers, through free dish to at least 20 million people of India. Look at the numbers, 5, 7 million and 20 billion. That is the press of a button and it is the installation of towers, installation of equipment led by vendors. I repeat, led by vendors. Many of them may be here. Now, moving on. Now, uh, we have, of course, largely reutilized the resources, but then uh, I find Mr. Zibert's uh, presentation to be very encouraging. In fact, it is too comforting. I'll have a dialogue with you later. The sum and substance of what he said was that broadcast engineering is here to stay. Nobody's challenging that. Nobody's challenging that. We are saying how long. That's fact one. And how attractive. Fact two. Many of us, uh, many of us were aware of the fact that after analog terrestrial came satellite, which I've mentioned, and went on capturing the world. And from the satellite, one digital path or multiple digital paths would rule. And when digital transmission rules, what becomes the role of the infrastructure providers? Let us take a good look at what is our challenge today. Our challenge right now is OTT. Now, OTT has been around for about seven years, eight years. In fact, longer. YouTube was the most successful OT. If I put it the other way around, the first search engine was an OTT. The search engine, whether it be Google or Yahoo, that's an OTT. That's technically an OTT. So we are used to the world of OTTs, over-the-top transmitters or over-the-top technologies who aggregate the airwaves, the, the infrastructure created by TSPs, by TSPs, that is infrastructure telecom service providers, ride free on them, ride free on them, and reach the customer smartly. That's a short point of OTT. WhatsApp is an OTT, Viber is an OTT. Now, Mr. Zebert mentioned about the success of, limited success of uh, YouTube, limited success of other OTT methods. I'm not getting into that. It's here today, you're finished tomorrow. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. This is a highly competitive world. YouTube may not last beyond a few years if there's some other technology that comes in. What we are bothered about is what may happen. I've been personally bothered about the right choice of technology because I lost one of my school friends who had invested all his money into pager at a time when cellular was knocking. He put all his money, he explained to me passionately for three years, and he committed suicide. Now, the world is very cruel to losers and very generous to victors, very generous to victors. Cellular did not make economic sense. Cell phones did not make economic sense to those who know pages as a communication. But cellular won through perfect marketing and adroit technology. In fact, they tried so many marketing, that's a case study in business. Coming to the problem, coming to the issues that we are confronted now. First, 4G is here. 4G is here. And a lakh crore, one lakh crore has been put in by a big company to 4G. How does it affect me? How does it affect me? It affects you terribly, tremendously. Because once 4G is available, a 16-lane highway is available for a small toll tax. OTT players would be jumping into it. And those who want to come in the legal way would also pay the toll tax and come in. That means OTT's importance transmitting through the superior TSP becomes a necessity for surviving in the business. So if they are going to get content and put it into my mobile, what role do I have? Next question. What role do I have? Now let's get the figures correct. We have about 120 million smartphones. 
take or give another 10 million because we have gray area of smartphones also. 120 million smartphone means this is the determining market of India. In addition to that, we have the whole database of 170, 75 million TV households. Multiply that by at least three, not five, and you'll know how many people are actually watching TV because there are multiple uh, TVs in single homes. Taken these two databases, you'll find its relation is about 1 is to 4, 1 is to 5. 1 is to 4 has a capability of watching it on the smartphone. 1 is 3 out of 4 do not have the capability. Look at the way mobiles expanded in India. Mobile has been the most disruptive and the unifying technological factor while we went on putting tower after tower, while we put, went on extending medium wave and short wave. It went over our heads. It jumped in from Gokul to get guns when it mattered. Now, OTT has succeeded in spasmodic, episodic degrees so far until market organizers like Netflix have come in. As I stand before you, Netflix has 42 million households in uh, sub, uh, subscription in the US and about 22 million here. This started three years ago. Their experiment started in 2007 and this exponential growth has taken place only three years. They depend upon a library, they depend on economies of scale, millions and thousands of materials, content hours available to them. In India, Mr. Singh was telling me that we have, they have very little but if that model goes on, it's like Amazon versus Flipkart, you are out. The bookseller is out. That's it. Now, talking of OTT, Mr. Zebert also mentioned that digital, uh, that broadcast engineers must also come up with their own solution. First of all, my submission is I have not seen the orthodox broadcast engineering community coming up with solution. Pardon my putting it. You know what I'm talking about. But outside fringe players have come up with some solutions. There are very bright elements I know because I keep getting mails from them who have come out with solutions because the choice is very clear. They understand that they may, they, they may not be able to retain their jobs. After all, remember, MTNL, the telecom sector, lost out in technology. Today, against 15 million or 20 million landline owners, we have one billion plus mobile owners, or mobile subscribers. So what is the need for continuing? Government in its wisdom declared it surplus. So if we do not have a utility, that is my prayer to you, if you do not continue to rethink, challenge your own thoughts, stop in your own tracks, revise the plans that come in, or plan funding that come in, we will only be reinforcing archaism. Now, the choice now is how to reach the customer on the go. All of us who have smartphones in this room know that we are watching smartphone much more than we are watching TV unless you are bunking office at 5.30. You know very well. You have what is called the urban hours of traveling. You have a lot of urban lifestyle built in stuff, urban, suburban. And this 120 million, if it clicks, in the urban and semi-urban belt will spread to the remaining 300 million, 400 million in no time. India's Jugar technology of coming down and crashing prices is well known. And that is why DRM looks upon us as the uh, guinea pig. Rupsandra must be around. So they look upon us as a case example. Now, my submission is that transmission would reach, content transmission would reach the smartphones as the first level, the policymakers and others, because people are on the go. Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen and ladies, television will not disappear so fast. As I was saying, our narrow gauge has also not disappeared so fast. We still have them. We still have the Darjeeling toy train. It's not like that. It's a question of its relative utility. When people are always on the move and always watching the handset, then Television will be a luxury on a Sunday that they are in their hometown and the 
and the PC, the personal computer which was rage in my age, will also become a luxury where you can see on big font and can sit without craning your back. It's a Sunday pastime. Throughout the rest of the week, you're working on tuck, 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 either on the tablet or on the other mobile instruments. If we take this writing on the wall, my humble, of course, I'll talk, talk it out with Mr. Zebert later. DBB T2 is perhaps our answer. But I'm used the word perhaps having gone through it for such a long time. Mr. Zebert, I've been watching you through four Amsterdams. Four. The fact that I have never been allowed to go to Amsterdam is beside the point. But that's beside the point. I've been watching all the technologies on show in Amsterdam. And I'm waiting for your LTE. You say it's coming. Now why I need it, why we need it, I'll explain. The original planning supported, confirmed by CEO Prasar Bharti and whoever, whoever else, is that DTT, that means the digitization of the terrestrial transmitter will be a very beautiful instrument for reaching the customer. Okay? But the original plan was ipso facto wrong. I'll tell you why. The plan is that once you remove, sir, EAV, uh, once you remove the analog antenna and you put in a digital antenna, you get 10, 8 to 10 television channels. So all over India, you started removing digital antenna, the analog antenna started putting 10. It's only in Bombay, Mumbai, Delhi, Calcutta and uh, Chennai that we have two. So two antennas, which means it gives me 20 TV channels. Do you think a person will subscribe 2,000 rupees to a set-top box to watch 10 channels? Think about it. Think about it, how these things are passed. 10 channels, will any subscriber in India ever watched fixed TV, that is linear TV, home TV, office TV, for 10 channels, even if it comes a digital route? or through Angel Gabriel, nobody will watch it. So the planning ipso facto was wrong. Now, there is a turnaround. I am glad that my ministry has supporting me in this turnaround business, but it took about two to three years to be, explain these things, because nobody is willing to come across and learn, and I am too old to go and explain to everyone. Now, having said that, two is the solution. Two means 20 channels. Now, for more than a year, 20 channels are being transmitted by Prasar Bharati Doordarshan from these four metro cities. Where are the transmissions going? Disappear. Just disappear. No users. For two years plus, Prasar Bharati has been trying to get an ecosystem prepared for receptors, for putting dongles in. For two years, and I now stand before you to say, I am giving up. Sorry, it can't come out here. I have asked Mr. Singh, the only person who understands technology but is not willing to take it up, that he must take it up because he's the only person who understands it. Take it up and move it forward to see that we get an ecosystem prepared, the dongles come in and the mobile set is reached even, Mr. even before DVB T2 comes up with his official mobile version. I know it is possible. We have seen the demonstration and maybe we'll go a little ahead. We have, because DBB T2 linear or home TV is not viable. Do not go in for another viable. Who's going to watch 10? Ask me. Who's going to watch 10, 10 channels on his TV and pay 2,500 rupees, even if it comes free? Because 2,500, 3,000 rupees is the cost of a set-top box. How many set-top box will you have in your house? It's not possible. So what is possible, forget the set-top box, put in a dongle, until the chip enable once comes and watch it on your TV. So you are direct competition to Reliance's 4G. You are direct competition to the OTT players like Netflix. Are you up to it? Are you up to it? You have such a large broadcast assembly of broadcast engineers. Today I'm posing this question. I'm not asking for an answer. You see, conflict and chaos is the beginning of growth. So never shy away from conflict. I'll give one, sis, one small example of how conflict ultimately leads to cooperation. This is a story about just after the American Civil War. 
this is written by Jules Verne or Jules Verne. It's called From the Earth to the Moon. A Colonel, Colonel Baltimore, uh, Colonel Barbican, had his usual rivalry with the Philadelphia Regiment. And the gentleman on the other side was, I think, Major Philip. They used to meet at the gun club of Baltimore every week. And at every week after arguments, they would go in for demonstrations once every year. What was the argument? One was a metallurgist who was trying to bring in a shell-resistant metal. And the other was a gunner who was aiming to crack every metal shield. Get it? And everyone knows this is the first ever science fiction about the moon being conceived 150 years before the first moon landing was made, more than 100. That's Jules Verne. So they went on and every time, every month, every few months, the shell was arranged, the gun was arranged, the new shell was put in, and everybody watched at the golf patch that the new armor plate was put in to see which one wins. Once at a time, he dented the armor, the other time, the other fellow won. And this competition went on. Until a Frenchman suggested, why don't you two get together? And what was produced? Produced was the most superior metallurgical creation called a rocket that could defy every disturbance of the universe and every heat generating properties. And the gunner's capability to blast off was used as the takeoff point. And they went to the moon and came back. With these words, I will leave you with some disturbing thoughts because I want this tremendous reservoir of technical knowledge to think a little beyond the beyond the arithmetical and go in for geometrical leaps. We cannot go on in this fast moving world on, geometri on, on less than geometrical or disturb geometrical progression. That is Muhammad. I, I don't gain anything by asking you because as I said this is my fourth year. If India's public broadcaster is to survive the 4G and the OTT world, there is only one way that the entire broadcast community of which it is a core starts thinking, does not wait for DVB T2 to come up with its light version, LT version, moves along with light, moves along with our Jugaad technology to the extent possible, will be five kilometers short. We'll be getting blocked at a few multi-storied houses, but we'll be there. We'll be there. And if we are not there, you miss the bus. You become pagers. That's it. Thank you very much and thank you for the patience.